I say every day. I found it. There How's things? How are you? Good, good. How you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Good to speak to you. I think last time we talked was uh, last time you were out down under, which is only uh, what four years ago now. Yeah, that's my new name, Dan <laughs> Under. <laughs> Dan hey, Under. Dan, you, Dan sign, Under. Signed to an Aussie label, uh, coming down to Australia. Uh, any chance of relocating from LA to uh, to the East Coast? That'd be, that'd be nice. <laughs> I, I, I'd do it. I'd do we're gonna, it. We're certainly going to put on some better weather than you guys are having at the minute. For oh, you. shit. It's been, yeah, douching over here. So, yeah. It's, kind of, it's nice out now, but it's chilly. But it's been like, yeah, a month of rain. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I was, talk, I was talking to you. Uh, I was talking to my my mates in uh, LA, and they said it's been absolute worst Great. weather they've like had. Oh, terrible! And I ride motorcycles, so it's like I'm like yeah. shit Crazy. stored in my neighbor's garage, and my other one's covered with two covers. I don't have a garage, so it's like, but my neighbor across the street, I use their garage for my because I got a new bike at the end of end of summer last for us last you know. Yeah. It's been sitting. It's been sitting in there since before Christmas. Stuff. I don't oh, even know. Take it out. Just shit. It would be great oh. to get out. Now. Yeah. It's a. I was just thinking. I mean, uh, the first time I saw you guys uh, live was uh, that infamous Guns and Roses tour uh, back in uh, eighty eight. UK. Yeah. Oh. Which was, yeah, that fantastic. was that was fun. We were fucking kids. Yeah, that was fucking yeah. killer. I mean, you would you would have been in the early twenties in. Well, I turned 23 in Germany. Yeah, wow. On that tour yeah. in, in Hamburg. Still one of the best triple bills I've I've ever seen, I think, uh, uh, all these years later. So it was, it was fantastic. Just, and then you, you came back to see us a couple of years later on your own, I think, from memory. Yeah, we came back on fucking whipped on, on Wake Me with the yeah. Almighty and fucking uh, yeah. Dangerous Toys. Wow, and there's there's new music from uh, Ricky from the Almighty with Black Star uh, Riders yeah. and new uh, it's music. fucking great. So what? Music from you as well coming up. Pardon me, hear... our audio cut out. Yeah, sorry, I hear you've got. It's new either that or my headphones. My... So we've got that Fab- Fabulous uh... AirPods, fucking thanks. But... <laughs> we've got we've got like a ghost, the single already out, which is. Reminds me of the early days in a way. It's sort of very stonesy. Right on. Cool. I first song I put together since the old days, sober. So yeah. it's like so that it's, was like I was c- kind of curious on how it was gonna come out. And I think it I think it came out pretty cool. So it's like yeah. it's I, I didn't I didn't ma- I didn't make it to sound like early shit. I just made it to sound cool. So I was like, I had no idea what what it was you know, compare when you do your own shit you don't really think of it yeah. as this or that you know so for people going for, for what i've heard from people and friends that have heard it and there's like yeah it reminds me of the old shit and it's like, i'm like right on that's cool i just i didn't try to you know it's like, yeah. i just What's wanted it? to do something that i thought was cool that sounded it's, good so. it, it's fantastic it's coming out that way i mean in my opinion i think I've always thought Faster Pussycat were one of the, the most underrated sort of like bands of the 80s. I mean, you had three fantastic albums there. I mean, it's it's 30 years. Can you believe it? It's Whip, Whip came oh, out. I know. It's fucking nuts. Yeah. It's yeah. like, and we're still here. I'm still here. So it's like, yeah. and the I'm more, the more I'm. The more I listen to that album, the the better it gets. It's one of those. I mean, I was always a, a first album guy, but. Uh, I think the more yeah. I listen to Whip, the more the more I get into that one, and almost forty years of the band as well. Two years time, yeah, been forty years. It's, I know it's crazy. It's just crazy. thinking of shit because, like, I remember when I left and did when the whole shit went down with the whole scene, and I went to Chicago and yeah. joined up with Pig Face and stuff. That been almost thirty years ago. Just wow. that. Well, the newly deads and all that. That was even after that. I was talking pig face. Yeah, was, Newly Dead's was like right That's after nice. probably ninety six is when I started it. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. ninety five when I started recording. Ninety six when we started doing gigs. And then started doing a lot of shit in ninety nine and stuff like that. But then we started doing faster again in 01. So 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it's great. I mean, take it, take us back to the the early days again. A young twenty odd year old kid. You're in the, I guess, the epicenter of music at that time, pre internet. Uh, you got bands around you like Guns and Roses and stuff like that. It must yeah, be there the are. Best, the it best was of fun. Time. They were all. We were all. You know. We were all friends too back then. I was friends with Tracy before mm-hmm. there was even Guns N' Roses. You know what I mean? It was he had his own band, LA Guns. You know what I mean? They were doing the shit and just we were all kids. I remember turning twenty one and going to the Rainbow, and just right. going. I I just went there because I already had been going there since I was twenty. So I didn't have any yeah. I, I didn't have any ID. And my birth certificate was in Seattle with my mom, so I had to spend my 21st birthday at the rainbow which i already been going there for the year prior yeah. when i moved there but yeah it was just like it was that period of time was just a lot of fun i mean we're just kids in a candy store that's just parties and just hanging out and everything was new you know what i mean mm-hmm. especially from someone from seattle where it's rainy and pretty dismal most of the time it's still beautiful in the summer and stuff but mostly it's just wet and you just go to disneyland when you're a kid and you're just like that's all you want to do yeah the rest of your yeah. life is moved to california where it's <laughs> beautiful and palm trees every day you know what i mean so it's like being being here at that time was pretty magical there was just especially for a, you know a rocker that you yeah. know it was just like girls bars you can get into i wasn't even of age you know what i mean mm. old enough to drink and i was in there you know what i mean and just it was just fun just a lot of camaraderie too just with friends and the whole whole melrose scene during the day yeah. you know i worked at retail slut and then there's other mick and jim my mick from la guns and i had francois from motorcycle boy down the street at another store and just we were all down there and then we'd just, take our lunches and go see someone else and then they'd come down and see me on there. You know, it was, it was fun. It was, a, that's where you hung out during the day. And then you were at the rainbow, the whiskey, a few other clubs like Imperial gardens for glam slam and other mm-hmm. shit at night. So it was just, and that was it. And it's always sad when I go back to LA, the more sort of like of those old places that close. Um, oh, it's just gone. Oh. It's just terrible. Melrose too. It's just like, it's like a war zone in terms of you're just lucky to walk down that street and not get mugged you know what i mean yeah. and which is horrible because it's actually a pretty nice area but you know nowadays it just doesn't matter they'll just can't walk your dog without someone trying to steal it it's pretty yeah pretty it changes i mean there's there's got to be a book or a movie or something in there somewhere i reckon somewhere somewhere because the cat, I mean, you got to add to that the cat house days and stuff like that. And there's there's a tale to be told. I mean, you, you, oh, you there's got, a lot of cool shit. And you yeah, I'm working on, we're actually working on contracts right now for doing a book hmm. right now. So I want to get back, we'll probably get started. So, but basically about my shit, but there's like a lot of, yeah, there's so much during that period of time, there was so much shit going on. That was, that was so fun, whether it's like, just the cat house days. And there was just a mix between so much stuff. You had all the, you know, delicious vinyl shit, Tone Loke and all that, the rap stuff coming up yeah. out, of, out of LA and Rick Rubin moving out here from New York. And just, we were all friends and stuff. So with the cat house and just, it was just a mishmash of just, you know, everything, mm-hmm. a melting pot of just so much so much shit going on in LA and in the late eighties and mid you know, beginning nineties and stuff too. It was just, yeah, it was yeah. a sea of a soup oh. of sh- crazy shit. That's for sure. <laughs> it was, a, it, it was a wonderful time and it was, it was good to have been there, even though I guess we're, we're all feeling a bit older now, but uh, it's, we uh, survived it. Survived it. We got out. Which is, yeah. which is a, you know, thing to say first off, you know, and I can I can still go and see Faster Pussycat play in uh, I'm I'm coming down to the Adelaide show so uh, oh right on cool I shall I shall I shall see you guys there I mean I remember back in 2008 I think it was first time you came that was the first time yeah with Lynch Mob I spent about 15 minutes talking to you and then turned around and spent half an hour talking to George Lynch it was oh it right was great. George- that was fun. That was a fun run. That was kill. That was the first time we were there, but it was also 
also just yeah everything was weird just to, doing those dates with george because it was originally supposed to be docking mm. then it ended right. just being us and george and but we travel with george and that's where we got to be friends we were on the same label with Electra back in the old yeah, days okay. but we our past didn't really cross that much we went out with motley and and they're on our label too you know what i mean but george and we just got to hang out that tour and it was just a lot of fun he's got a really funny sense of humor he's got a real dry just yeah. fucking he just cracked us up the whole fucking time so it was like because yeah. we travel remember. all together in the vans to the to the venues and the hotels and the ho airports it was yeah. got to spend a lot of time with george and i he's a he's a good guy yeah and he, he went surfing on the day of the perth uh date and he, he just had the, the worst sunburn all over i remember that was <laughs> i think i kind of remember that too <laughs> that's funny but um, one one of the the things I want to talk about is um, glam because you you're here for the uh, uh, the tour with glam in the name. Uh, how, how do you see all that the the whole the whole glam scene? To, to me, it was just it, it was a bunch of bands. They all sounded different back in the eighties. You know, great music, but the hair metal. It's all, I've always been worried by that take. It's just all weird. I'm like, they can call it whatever. To, to me, I've always said, we're just a rock and roll band. But it's mm -hmm. like glam. And it's just like, if you want to call it people that wear, put on makeup. Yeah, I wear tons of makeup. I don't do, I don't wear it as much nowadays. Mm -hmm. Just because I don't, because I've been there, done that forever. Just like Bowie or fucking whatever, go through his fucking mm -hmm. face. Maybe Coop, Coop's got his coop. You know what I mean? Kiss has got the kiss. So it's like, that's their shit. So I'm just a rock and roll band. So in terms of glam, I don't know. I just don't like, you know, they put us in Wednesday and all this shit. It's like glam's glam. As long as gl glamorous, it's supposed to be glamorous, but it was like, we're just a dirty rock band. And that's where we've always been. We were just more glamorous then because we were young, younger yeah. and cute. You know what I mean? <laughs> now we're old and ugly, but it's like, you cover, you, you it's cover just kind of a vibe kind of a yeah. vibe of the shit too it's like i've never been the one into you know tags in terms yeah. of just rock and roll and we've been called sleaze kings and gutter fucking whatever and kings of glam it's kings of sleaze and call me whatever the fuck you want i don't give a shit it's just rock and roll it's like it's, it is it is just rock and roll and then the more you listen to it the more you realize it is uh well you've covered one of my favorite songs pirate love by uh, uh who i consider thunders. to be one of my favorite artists johnny thunders were, oh by far in, were you into that sort of stuff growing that was up like, I mean, that's what if you listen to the early faster record hmm. i wrote most of the, most of that shit just pinching fucking aerosmith and Johnny Thunder's riffs, you know what I mean? Just yeah. taking his riff and then reversing it and then turning yeah. it into another. It was just influence. I wouldn't steal anything blatantly, but yeah. I go, I love that song. I want to write a song, something like it, but then reverse it. And yeah. that's how I like. That's how I came up with like "Slip of the Tongue" was a reversal yeah. of a Aerosmith "Somebody." You know what I mean? It was just yeah. Yeah. reverse of the riff, and I throw it back beat on there and then i come up with a whole different melody but that gave me the influence to write that song because i love those songs you know what i mean so it's just thunders it's like the you know the dolls and mm. lamf and just everything all that shit was just fucking great the dance right, the fucking I mean, lords of the new church and yeah. all that shit was like shit i fucking that all like that's the shit i was into when i uh put faster together yeah. at that time when i moved to la because i was friends with mick mick cripps turned me on to a lot of the shit he was just my he was my bro when we we started faster originally so he turned me on to a lot of shit he had just moved to la from he's from australia but he yeah, yeah, moved yeah. to he moved to la from from england he was living over there and i, I had met his brother robert his twin brother before and he was, i mean my brother he's coming out and then I met his brother and me and him just, you know, we just started hanging out and that was the shit. So he turned me on to a lot of the stuff that I wasn't really even aware of. A lot of the English mm. shit, the early shit. So, so I was still young. 
Still, I was yeah. young, a kid, still learning about, still probably hadn't had Thai food yet. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> sushi, and sushi and shit. I just remember all that shit. There was the first time you had that. You know what I mean? It wasn't when you were eight, unless you were, you know what I mean? And that's, and that's just, why those times were so special, isn't it? Because yeah, it was, there was all this, all this great music and everyone everyone was grabbing the first of everything. I mean, I, it's funny you say that. I remember the first time I had Thai food as well, and that would have been around about 80, <laughs> 80, 80, 89. Exactly. Well. exactly. Now now, I remember now it's going a, to sushi, took my brother to sushi, and this was like fucking... We already had a record deal and shit, so it had to be in the late 80s, early 90s. Took my brother out to sushi and gave him wasabi, told him it was guac. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I remember that. <laughs> and it was like my he brother would, had that. She's that, a year so. and a half older than me. So it's yeah. like he was yeah. from, up, from up in Seattle. So it's, like, it's, it's going to be a crazy tour. I was just thinking of the logistics of all this. And there's going to be about, there must be about 50 guys on a bus doing this. I, I know. I already knew it was kind of nutty just when we were there. Let alone us and George. Now mm. it's gonna. Yeah, I have no fucking clue. It's gonna be a clusterfuck, but <laughs> but it'll be fun because they're like you know I'm friends with like Chippy and Wednesday, mm. and I'm friends with fucking Stevie Rochelle and some of the guys. I don't even know who's in Floyd right uh, now. If Steve, Steve, I think, yeah. Steve, I'm friends with. You know, I'm friends with. I don't know who's all in the band. But I don't even know who's all coming over with tough either but mm. we're all friends so it'll be fun it'll be like oh hey i'm so and so so it'll be a lot of yeah, bunch of it, fucking americans over there it will Raiders. be great I've, I've got as soon as i finish talking to you i've got stevie and then i've got chip in an hour oh right on so, uh, cool so we're doing a tell few, them i but... tell them i said hello and i'll see those fuckers soon enough <laughs> I, I certainly will i mean uh, you're also one of the hardest working bands out there i think i mean every year i used to come back to the states i'd always manage to catch a faster pussycat tour because uh you guys we try to keep busy fuck it sleep when we're dead let's (laughs) fucking let's get out and play while we can and the lineup right now is really good too so we're fucking sam bam and ronnie so we've got one sam sam sounded really good like i wasn't just a fuck he's just amazing kid the kids just He's going to go on to do lots and lots of big things because he's just, it's just effortless and he's just so fucking good. I'm just, I'm privileged to have him. He's the, you know, he's the best guitar player I've ever played with by mm-hmm. far. And I, even Greg was on stage with us the other night because this is the best lineup you guys have ever had. So, because he comes yeah. up with, he's going to come up at the whiskey show when we, at the oh, end cool. of April. We're playing up yeah. there. When we're in town doing shows in LA, if he's not, he's, he's a dad. He's got his yeah. kids. He got two kids and shit. So he, you know, he's gonna come up on at the whiskey show when we play. Yeah. It's always it's fun. Cool. To, I talk it's to cool. I talk to him on a you know couple of times a week. We still deal with all the business shit with the old faster stuff. And yeah, it's cool. It's cool because I think a lot of the guys were back up on stage with you 2015. Uh, when you yeah, we did that cat house did live that. thing. That was yeah. fun. Yeah, that was cool. I talked yeah. and I talked to Brent. I did the Chris Angel birthday party with a bunch of fucking oh, cool. people. It was just fucking great with Robin Zander yeah. and Sebastian and Stephen Piercy and just Brent Woods and Robbie Crane and Brent Fitz played the band. And then yeah. we just rotated some singers and Lita Ford. And it was for Chris Angel's birthday and a charity for uh, children's cancer research. So and that yeah. was fucking fun that was that was, that was a blast just hanging out with robin zander was just uh-huh. bucket full of shit right there he's just such a nice guy his family is incredible his kids and his wife they're just they're so cool they're just yeah. great. No, I, mean, I mean all those guys are i mean i love talking to rick as well he's one of the funniest guys like oh yeah he's hilarious i used to live me and i used to live next door to tom me and him lived oh, yeah. in like a melrose place type apartment yeah. thing right Right off Sunset, right by the Sunset Car Wash. Now, there's and a those TV guys, show. Yeah, Tom wouldn't drive. Tom didn't drive. So they. it was back when they were doing the – right before I went to Chicago to do Pig Face, they were doing the record for Red, Red uh, Red yeah, Ant yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So they'd, they'd drop them off, and every time they'd drop them off, they invade my place because it was right in the front of the complex, and they'd just – Rick and Robin and, and Tom. And Tom would always come over and uh, – bring a bottle of wine and glasses you want to have a 
share this bottle of wine with me? And I go, as long as you tell me some cheap trick stories, you got it. <laughs> uh, that, was, it was, that was a fun time living there. It was right, be right before I went to Chicago. So the it was 93. The, yeah. the, the perfect evening. We're going we're gonna to do a bit of stuff for radio. So uh, in the lead up, we've, we've got a radio show now. Uh, we, we actually formed this. Funny, I actually started the Rock Pit after that show you guys played with George Lynch. Because uh, when I was talking to George, I was telling him how there were, there were no websites out there doing the sort of stuff I loved. And he goes, why don't you start on it? The next year I did. <laughs> so so it's partly your fault that we're, we're still here after, <laughs> after well, 14 I'll... years. So, uh, yeah. um, But we do a little bit for radio just as a teaser for the interview. So I've just got a couple of quick questions to ask and then uh, we're going to play some Faster Pussycat, so we're going to play the new song, Like a Ghost, if you could introduce that. And then if you can pick one off uh, the first record as well, we'll, we'll play that. Um, All right. So, but before we get there, um, if you could have been a fly on the wall for the creation of any great album, and I've asked you this question before, so I want to see if things have changed. What do you I love know, to see made? You know, I mean, there's so many different so many different great albums you know i you can go to all shook up by cheap trick or rocks by aerosmith there's just so many just you can go you can go back to where we were talking before about thunders but th those yeah. are so spread out of different periods of time just compiling them together but i think the aerosmith shit would be be fun to fucking be around yeah. during that period of time just seeing the shit that was going on between oh, that, Tyler that, and Perry and that great period from Toys in the Attic to um, Draw the Line, I reckon that, that's what I would love to Oh, see. those that was junior high school for me. That was just yeah. like those are the best fucking records ever. There were it's like that was when everything was like started rocking and we got A C D C Highway to Hell coming out, right? All yeah. that stuff was just my junior high and 10th grade and stuff it was pretty oh, yeah it was all, it was all fantastic stuff and the, the last question we got for you is if you could have been credited with one song that you didn't write what's the Ooh. what's the song out there that really touches you that, that every time you hear it you, you get that connection oh my god I'd probably the one that makes me move the best and the one song that Right off the top of my head that I always fucking love hearing is Love Remo Removal Machine by The Cult. I yeah, just no matter, just the riff and the way it kicks in, the way fucking Ian's voice sounds on it, it's just fucking magical. It's, yeah, fucking, that's that's just, it's just it's just cool. That's, you can look up cool and say Love Removal Machine <laughs> right next to it because that, that's, that's, that song's just it fucking spits cool. Yeah, it might also say faster pussycat when you look up cool as well. So one of the oh. one of one of one of the greatest fans of the era in my book. Uh always a pleasure to speak to you. Before we go, uh we'd love for the Rock Pit Radio, if you could mention mm -hmm. that. Uh we'd love to uh play Like a Ghost and um anything you'd like off the uh, first album. All right. If you can right. hey, this is Hey, this is Tammy from Faster Pussycat, and you're listening to Like a Ghost. And this is Tammy from Faster Pussycat, and this is Smash Alley off our first record. Smash Alley, great song. Love it. Are you, you going to be playing that for us when you come back? I don't know. We're going. I'm going to rehearsal tomorrow. We'll see what the fuck. We don't know what we're playing yet. Yeah. We're going to put it together. We're going to try to play Like a Ghost. It's never been played yet. So Wow. That, that They've been rehearsing be it a couple times, but we... Everybody's been out of town because of the holidays and shit. And mm -hmm. Chad was taking care of shit for his dad in, in Ohio. He's get back gets back today. So tomorrow mm -hmm. we have rehearsal, and then the next day we got to prepare to leave, and then we're leaving Saturday. So, oh cool. So I haven't it. sang it. I, that's why this is up here. This is like a ghost. The tracks, yeah. so I could practice. I did it yesterday. It was easy, but it was like I know the the words, but it's just a matter. of – I haven't only really sang it in a room yet, so it's like. Wow! Because I just retract it, and we haven't we haven't played since we didn't play it last year. We played Nola, and yeah. we did Pirate Love, so which we'll we'll be playing. So that's another thing. It's like, but the guy said it sounded it sounded good. So because it's just a matter of splitting up the guitars. Because 
there's tons of guitars on that track. So it's yeah. man, who who's gonna play what and do that? There hasn't been a whole lot of deciphers. So we'll see when I get down there whether it's up to uh, whether it's up to par to play because I'm not gonna play it unless it's fucking oh, sounds let's, killer. So let's hope so because it's, it's a great song. A lot of people. So like, we'll it? hopefully by Adelaide. Yeah, <laughs> Brisbane might make if it makes it past sound check. We'll play it. Then we'll try it again in Melbourne. Then we'll see. You got three. So we'll see what happens. Well, Hopefully, well, if you played in Adelaide, I'll, I'll come and tell you how it went. Cool, awesome. Take care, my friend. Pleasure. To Take care, to brother. You. I'll, right, I'll later, see, see you on the road. Bye. I'll see you in Adelaide, brother. Later. <laughs>